Hi, and welcome to section 2, Diving Deeper into Julia. In this section, we will further discuss the use of types to make code more general and performant. Using macros to make code more flexible and less repetitive will be discussed, as well as modules to organize code. Finally, we explain how to add the capabilities of your Julia environment by using external packages. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with types and parameterized methods. We'll gain insight into the overall importance of types in Julia in writing generic and performant code. Indication of the type of variables in Julia is optional. A program can run without types, which is useful when prototyping. In fact, Julia infers the types. Typing variables, especially function parameters, can increase performance and make your code more robust by throwing exceptions in cases where certain type operators are not allowed. Julia has a rich built-in type system and most data can be parameterized such as these types are for two-dimensional array of floating point numbers of 64 bits and a dictionary with symbol keys and float 64 values. In fact, we could write this with a generic type indication, like T or K and V. For example, T could be int32, float 64, ASCII string, symbol, and so on. Isn't that awesome? If you need to assert that the value is of the right type, Use the assertion operator colon colon in local variables or functions. A type error is introduced here to show how Julia responds. Int64 is a concrete type because there exist values of that type, like 108. It has a super type, signed. Signed is an abstract type because there are no concrete values of that type. Instead, it has subtypes. The less than colon notion is used to indicate that int32 is subtype of signed. In the same way, all number types are subtypes of the abstract type number. Types in Julia form a hierarchical tree, with any as the common supertype. Any has 228 subtypes. You can see part of this tree for numbers on the screen. If you didn't know, a developer can define his or her own types as well. Let us define a type iris for our iris flower measurements. You see, we indicate the type of every field. If you give no type, it is assumed to be any, which means it can be any type. You can get the field names of a type as an array of symbols by using field names. The type definition automatically creates methods to make iris values as follows. Fields can be accessed with a dot notation, as in Java or C Sharp. Such a value is mutable. For example, if I want to change the petal width to 0 0.3, this works. If you want to forbid that a value can be changed, then the type must be defined as immutable. Note that a type definition cannot be changed in Julia. That's why we must take a different name. You can also make arrays of our iris type and put out measurements in it. We could make our definition of iris more general by specifying that all measurements must be of the same type, T. But T can be any number type that is a subtype of real. We say that iris type is parameterized. Now, measurements can be integers or decimal numbers. In the same way, functions are parameterized when they take a generic type for their arguments, like in this example. Here, we define a function add that takes two arguments of a generic type, t, because we know for certain that plus is defined for all numbers. We could even specify t to be a subtype of number. For instance, if we try to add two flowers, we get a method error because plus is not defined for strings. Julia looks at the types of each of its arguments and chooses, dispatches to, the most specific method, the one that best fits all types. 
This will generate more performant machine code, optimized for these types. That is the reason why indicating types in functions can increase performance. This is called multiple dispatch. Let's check this in our code. Say we define a function to add two floating point numbers, which prints that out. Now we have defined three versions, called methods, for the function add. We can list these with the methods function. When we add two integers, one of the general add methods is called. But when we add two float64 numbers, the add method specific for this type is executed. Every function or operator, which are also functions, has a number of implemented methods. Look at the plus operator. It has 171 methods in Julia v0.4, defined for all application types. Suppose we would have defined a different type for each of our iris flowers. We could then define a union type iris that unites them all, and define methods that take an iris type. These would work for all flowers of types Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Any values of these types is also of type iris. In this video, we have investigated types in Julia and saw how they can be used to make methods and user-defined types more general.